Hello, all you out there, patrons and friends and fellow viewers, welcome. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quick video, try to be quick, about tempo, time, and backbeats. So um, I got the opportunity to work on Chicago on Broadway many, many years ago. And you all know the opening number, uh, this one. Uh, I was playing the first keyboard book, which is which is the more difficult book. I was young, I was foolish, and I went into it. Anyway, um, the conductor gave me a very valuable piece of advice. Rather than putting the click, the beat, on one and three, putting it on two and four, uh, you would think, one would think playing four quarter notes, four pulses evenly, equally, would be easy. This, two, three, four. Uh, when I started thinking about two and four, the backbeat, uh, friends don't let friends clap on one and three, they clap on two and four. Uh, I started to change the way I played everything. Uh, and so one, I think it was a Christmas one year, I said all I wanted for Christmas was a Dr. Beat. I mean, hello, I'm a nerd. Uh, and what's great about Dr. Beat is you can um, break it down into twos. Uh, you can break it into threes and break it into fours, which is kind of nice. Uh, we can get rid of that. Uh, we can also take out the one, and so now we just have the backbeat. Well, the pulse anyway. So imagine, if you will, here's, here's what it comes down to. If I'm going one, two, I'm still putting the pulse on one and three, but if I take out the downbeat, without accenting two and four, I found that it, it, it solidified all the inside beats uh, and so with that, I started looking at my like, things like this, like, uh, uh. started looking at Bach and any other, any other metronomic music and even music that was a little freer. Um, but then I was, uh, more to the point of this is that I was working on uh, a piece for an audition that I had. And uh, I don't get to audition very often, uh, more by referrals these days, but if I get to play for people, you know, it's always a good thing. So, uh, I uh, was working on a Gershwin piece, a Gershwin prelude, and uh, I worked on this piece uh, and was more concerned about rushing, because I think every, every job I've had, every musician I've worked with, every choreographer for that matter, dancers and directors, they're always concerned about tempo, especially speeding through dance numbers, making it playable, making it danceable. Uh, and of course, the longer you do a piece of a, a, a Broadway show, or a, if you're singing a piece, uh, one can get bored with it, one can get tired of it, and it's very easy to rush. So, um, I changed the tempo on my Dr. Beat, and I have this, uh, this backbeat, uh, the piece I was doing was the Gershwin Prelude. Uh, but it's very easy because there's a there's a dotted rhythm. This rhythm, the uh, 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 and there's space between that, and it's very easy to rush. In fact, a lot of us do. Um, we have to play the rests. You know, this is all the lessons in music over the years, and then of course experience. Uh, that comes with that, then you realize, oh my gosh, I rushed through that. Um, I started practicing with this. Which kind of helped land the syncopation. So I'm doing... Uh, and you notice the offbeat becomes the notes that follow the click. If I go... Uh, nope.
And I think the reason this helps is all of us, if we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, uh, oh, we tend to rush into the next downbeat. And pretty soon that pushed beat or that last beat is, is cheated. And the next downbeat comes sooner and sooner and sooner. And we lose all sense of, of being steady. So with that, I decided, well, let's go one step further. What if I added the even smaller beats, the 16th notes in this case? So I'm actually hearing every beat except the strong pulse. So that absence actually helps me place that beat. So the first, the first two bars of this, of this prelude are free and I've heard 20 different versions, 20 different ways and 20 different pianists, including George himself, would do their own, their own jazzy whatever. But then we get to rhythm and it goes like this. Obviously, that's sort of by the numbers, the metronomic version of that. Um, and all of us performers out there would, you know, like to shape and mold and move and push and pull. But the most important thing is knowing where the beats are and knowing where you are taking time. Otherwise, it becomes arbitrary. And uh, especially maybe for vocalists out there, uh, I've known uh, vocalists particularly loving to sing long lines and push us further away from where the beat lies. Um, and so even though we may not be singing the beat or even playing the beat, if we're playing a rest, if we have space between, we have to honor that space. Otherwise we lose sight of the overall structure of the piece and the rhythm of the piece. And in that case, uh, it's very rhythmic. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like it, love it, share it, tweet it, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and join me on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Mikey Young Music. I'll see you there. Bye.